So I don't know if you guys know this, but apparently you can install Windows Defender or I guess Windows Antivirus on Red Hat and it's supposedly very good. And on Windows, Microsoft Defender or antivirus software is pretty good on its own. So I'm not too surprised that it would be good on Linux as well. But it's interesting to find out that you can actually download it and install it, um, like I guess from the repositories for Microsoft, which is pretty dope. I do know that Microsoft does a lot of work uh, with Red Hat, like building drivers and all sorts of other things for Red Hat and they do work pretty closely together, but it was just pretty strange to find out that they specifically have um, Windows Defender, but it doesn't look anything like uh, what you would expect, I suppose. It's definitely a lot more command line. So let me get this pulled up and we'll try to go through the installation instructions and see like how far along we can get and what it's like. And then we'll talk about like uh, things to expect from this software so that way you don't do this at home or maybe maybe you do want to do this at home i don't know but there's definitely some expectations that need to be set before you run off and uh do this right so uh, let's let's check it out okay interestingly enough it looks like they actually call this um De uh, microsoft defender endpoint so i'm not gonna lie i don't know the full details of the software i only know a little bit about it but uh, I'm guessing that this has actually has to connect to maybe some cloud service um, like Office 365 in the cloud or something in order to actually work. Um, so let's let me get logged in here real quick. All right, there we go. So uh, anyway, so I think it might work locally, but you'll probably be missing um, some features or maybe um, the license will expire and then it won't work as well or you won't get updates or something to that effect. Um, so we're just going to kind of follow the guide here on the right that Microsoft provides um, to see if we uh, can do this following the guide. Let's see here, yum. Let's see if I already have yum utils installed. I probably do, but I'd like to double check just in case. Okay, so it, d it does look like I will need to install yum, yum utils here, uh, interestingly enough. So let's do that real quick with the DNF install yum-utils. And then if I scroll down here on the right, it looks like we need to add the repository um, to our system. So I'm just gonna copy this yum configure manager. Line. Oh, there's a copy line right here, sweet. So I'm just gonna copy that here. Um, okay, let's back away the sudo. So it says, uh, if you are rel, CentOS, and you configure L channel, okay, so we're on rel eight, so we're gonna change version to eight. Channel, I'm guessing is um, maybe like, oh, okay, they have an example here, it says production, so I'm guessing they must have different like uh, productions, early access, insight, uh, something to that effect. Um, again, I don't know too much about Windows, but I think they do these insight kind of things too. That's kind of like a preview, I think. Uh, so let's go ahead and add this repository. Error, repo, configuring repo, failed. Did, oh, I, type, I typed in pro wrong. It's prod, production. There we go. All right, so continuing on. Uh, yeah, those are all the variants of Linux. I'll just keep on scrolling here. Um, I don't know what any of this is. Application install. So now we need to install the application. All right. So DNF install dash Y M D A T P. All right. Let's see what that gets us. Okay. So while this is installing, um, if you are told to deploy Microsoft deployment, or I'm sorry, Microsoft Defender on your servers or your infrastructure that has like databases and stuff, that's probably not a good idea uh, unless you of course add the appropriate exceptions. So kind of think of it like if you have McAfee running on your servers, your Linux servers, right? You know, McAfee Endpoint is just an absolute hog when it comes to scanning every single little file. And if it's on a database, it basically renders your equipment um, useless, right? And I have a feeling that this is gonna do the same thing. That's not something unfortunately I can test because I just don't have anything at that scale. Um, but I would imagine it's pretty much the same. And there are 
exceptions that you're probably going to have to do in certain directories or with certain executables to avoid situations like that. Um, I have read a little bit about Microsoft Defender and other people within the Linux community say it's actually pretty good for their systems, um, but this is on like corporate networks and such. I don't think it would be useful at home because of licensing, but I also don't know how the licensing works, so take that part with a grain of salt. Um, okay, so it looks like we got it installed now, and um, let's keep going down here. Ubuntu do, 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 onboarding package. Um, so yeah, we don't have I don't or I don't we I, I don't have a Microsoft Office 365 Defender Portal account. So I don't think we can onboard our endpoint into um, this. Unfortunately, uh, some what is this? Some zip file. Yeah, so this must be a zip file you download to help do the onboarding process. It looks like the Python script. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, let's see what let's see what we got here anyway. M D A T P. All right, it's installed. Health. Okay, so is our system healthy? False. Uh, the reason why it's not healthy, health issue, is because we're missing a license, uh, which makes sense. Uh, product expiration unavailable. That's interesting. I wonder if this does expire. Definitions updated March 9th. Okay, okay, up to date. Definition status disabled. I'm guessing we're never going to get new updates uh, when this expires. So I wonder if like, we reinstall this multiple times if we will get new updates. Um, that'll be interesting. Let's see, how do we run this thing? Um, MDATP dash dash help. Config, log, health, exclusion. Oh, there you go. So manage antivirus exclusions. That's going to be really important if you uh, do a lot of like data or have a lot of data going in around. So I don't believe this uh, laptop is infected anything, but I do want to do a scan real quick. Let's see how long this takes. MDAT, wait, how it? MDATP scan uh, let's see let's see if we can tab this out oh there we go so we so I hit tab twice on the keyboard and it gave me options of cancel custom full or quick um, let's go with quick real quick <laughs> I didn't mean to do that that was way too quick let's go with full zero threats detected that's good let's see how long this takes so this full scan I didn't check the time it's um, what's uh, 648. Uh, that took no time at all. That wasn't bad. Um, again, this this is like a brand new deployment of Red Hat, though, so there's really nothing on here. Uh, let's see what let's see what this uh, network protection does. MDATP. Uh, it's so weird to type out. Network protection exclusion interface set log level trace. Let's see interface list operation not supported. Okay. Um, I would probably have to do a deep dive on all these commands to really like figure out what's going on. Let's see, trace, trace, start, file name. So we need to give it a name for the network, dash dash name, uh, log, or network log, network.log, I don't think it matters. Input output error, network.text. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing, clearly. So whatever the case. Anyway, the whole point of this is really just to show you guys that it's possible to install, uh, or install Microsoft Defender on uh, Red Hat and clearly on Ubuntu, uh, Fedora. And I think I saw like a Debian in there. Um, there was a few flavors of Linux in here for sure. CentOS, of course. Oracle Linux, of course. Um, but anyway, that's pretty interesting that like it's available. I don't know what you would do with it. Maybe it's like a cheaper option than McAfee. I'm not entirely sure the pricing of McAfee. But um, anyway, it seems pretty cool. I kind of want to run with this for a while just to see like what happens if it has any sort of um, if I can figure out how to do like the actual network protection. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna have to play with this on my own. But anyway, so this thing totally exists, and apparently installing it is actually incredibly simple. I feel like most things, especially with Red Hat, when you follow instructions on how to install anything, especially, um, f I don't know. I don't want to say from the internet, but Microsoft, in my experience, never really has the best uh, how tos or guides or whatever. But this was really straightforward and probably one of the easiest things I've ever done. So uh, anyway. <laughs> 
I that, I thought it was interesting. Um, we didn't even have to play with like keys or anything like that, or we didn't have to do any like kind of, you know, tricks to get around. Um, I guess checking keys and uh, SSL certificates or none of that stuff. It, I mean, it just worked. That was pretty awesome. Uh, anyway, so this again, this whole video is just to introduce this to you guys, uh, just because I thought it was neat. There's really nothing to learn here or whatever, but. Anyway, for those of you that uh, are watch or have watched this video, thanks a lot for joining me on this. Um, I'm gonna play around with this a little bit more off camera just to see what comes of it. Um, I, I, yeah, again, I think it's pretty interesting and I don't know, maybe you guys are into this too. So, uh, see you later. I don't know.